Hello everybody and welcome back to the ASUS North America YouTube channel. This is JJ once again and we're bringing you guys another overview. Uh, this is going to be for something a lot of you have been asking for and a lot of you have been waiting for and this is our mini ITX series motherboard. Uh, but from our mainstream series, this is going to be the Z87-i Deluxe. Uh, so as always, what we're going to be covering here in this video is a little bit of everything. Everything from the features and the functionality to the topology of the product. Um, but we're also going to be covering a couple of different things and changing up how we present you the information this time around. Uh, we're making some changes here to the format to hopefully be able to give you guys the best type of information that you guys are interested in uh, from start to finish. And as always, we definitely would appreciate your guys' feedback on the type of changes that we're incorporating here and whether you like them or whether you'd like to see something else. So make sure to keep that in mind uh, towards the end of the video uh, in your comments and your feedback to us. Um, so with that, we are going to go ahead and one, definitely touch on the overall layout, the topology, the feature set, and the functionality. Two, we're just going to do a very quick pass through on the accessories. We won't be detailing them. And then three, we're actually going to introduce an entirely new section that covers performance-based characteristics such as overclocking and bus-related information like serial ATA, USB 3 performance, and a couple of other factors. Rounding that out at the end, of course, we're still going to give you guys a complete perspective on how to consider this type of motherboard in relation to you building a brand new Z87-based system, as well as actually rounding it out with some recommendations for you guys that are interested in building a small form factor based build. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into the Z87-i Deluxe. Okay guys, so first up, you can see right here we've got the Z87-i Deluxe, and so we just want to give you a little bit of context in terms of where this board sits in relation to our entire stack of Z87 series motherboards. One, of course, it's a mini ITX based motherboard as opposed to a micro ATX or full size ATX based motherboard, so it's focused at small form factor based RICs. So for you guys that are looking to build compact media servers, media centers, small form factor gaming boxes, or just a slim line desktop uh, that still has high performance and rich in connectivity, this is where it fits the build. Two, in relation to where it sits and maybe other small form factor boards that we offer, we currently offer a couple of different mini ITX based solutions, uh, with the other high performance model being our Maximus 6 Impact. If you guys are interested in finding out how the Impact is a little bit different from this board, make sure to check out our Maximus 6 Impact overview video, which covers that board in detail and depth. Uh, we also do have a non-overclocking related version with a bit cut down features in terms of the things uh, like wireless and a couple of other focal points on the board, uh, but still is ASUS quality and offers great functionality and great expansion in an H-series mini ITX board. Uh, but overall, for you guys that are pretty much looking for the best of the best in relation uh, to a small form factor mini ITX board, this is going to be the option for you. If you want everything installed by default on the bat, this is the board that you're going to be interested in. So next up, let's go ahead and actually take a little bit closer look at what comes included with the Z87-i Deluxe. Okay, the Z87-i Deluxe comes included with six serial ATA cables, both right angle and straight through. Next up, we've got our padded I.O. shield. From there, we've also got our user guide and our setup manual, a case badge, our support DVD, which includes all the drivers and setup software, including AI Suite 3. We have our Q connector, which is actually a special extensive lead. And then from there, lastly, we have our 811AC Bluetooth antenna uh, and reception module. We'll go into a little bit more detail on these two right now. Okay, guys, so quickly touching a little bit more on two accessories that come included with the unit. One, we have our actual Q connector, um, which is an, a Q connector extension cable, which runs to the bottom left-hand side of the board, which allows us to go ahead and more quickly be able to connect all our front leads, such as our power button, our HD LED, or our reset, things along those lines. Makes it much easier than having to route through to this tight little block area here directly on the motherboard, especially in those confined uh, areas for a mini ITX chassis. Now, in addition to that, we have a really cool antenna design that we've gone ahead and redeveloped for this generation and uh, it's actually flexible so you have different positions for it. It also offers a magnetic base and a great touch is that we've gone ahead and improved the connection fittings to be SMA based antennas. Um, this is great because on the Dash I Deluxe it means that you have the flexibility that if you don't decide you want to use this antenna you can go ahead and upgrade to a different or higher amplification DBI antenna um, but by default these actually offer quite solid signal strength and reception plus you can go ahead and adjust it for optimal reception and throughput. So make sure to keep in mind that for the best Bluetooth and 811 an AC performance you do want to use this. So from here, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about the Dash I. Okay guys, so now we're going to focus in on the topology for the motherboard itself. And first off, we can see that we've got this vertical daughter board, uh, which is the dedicated area for our VRM. So all our voltage regulation componentry. So normally on a standard ATX based motherboard, this section here in the CPU socket would usually have a lot of the MOSFETs, the capacitors, the chokes that would actually be there for power delivery for our CPU so that when we're overclocking, we have a lot of power to be able to provide to that. Uh, because of the small form factor area here on a mini ITX board, we're really kind of constrained in that 
that. Um, but as always with the Dash I Deluxe, our focus is to be able to give you ATX level performance and quality, but with an ultra small form factor design. So you can see that's what we've accomplished here with this discrete vertical daughter board, which also gives us the added benefit of giving us actually improved clearance in the CPU socket area so that we can use larger low profile CPU cooling solutions. So uh, not only do we get high performance VRM, but we also have additional clearance. Now this is a 12 phase VRM design, 12 plus 2, meaning that we have 12 phases for the CPU uh, as well as then two for the DRAM. So overall we have very, very high end power output capability, meaning that we can overclock this without any issues when it comes to stability and reliability. Uh, of course we continue to utilize high performance MOSFETs and drivers and 5K rated capacitors, twice the industry standard. So that is the DigiPlus power design that we have here powering the entire uh, CPU, uh, both at idle and at overclock configurations. So for there, let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of the motherboard. Okay guys, so let's go ahead and focus in here on the topology and layout. You can see right here from the top we've got four fan headers. That's a big upgrade from the previous generation which only offered two and didn't fully support our Fan Expert 2 technology. This generation, every single one of these headers supports both three pin and four pin control, both within the UEFI as well as under AI Suite 3 via Fan Expert 2. So really big upgrade giving you the best in class controls you can get, especially on a mini ITX based board. That's really nice for those larger size enclosures that give you more fan room. Now right there to the left hand side we've got the DigiPlus VRM power solution that we talked about here with the vertical VRM. Now one note that I do want to touch on here is you can see that we have a huge amount of space between the CPU socket as well as the PCI Express slot. This is key because what we've done is we've optimized the layout to go ahead and give you guys the best compatibility uh, for high performance low profile cooling solutions. So even if you're using these larger type solutions from either companies like Noctua, Tower Base Designs, uh, or Promelia Tech, or Thermalrite, or any of those type of companies, you're going to be able to fully install all that without any type of issues and you won't be impacting the PCI Express slot by even using taller tower based heatsink designs. So that's a nice touch that you won't necessarily see um, when considering the overall layout of the board but it does impact your usability of it especially when working in different types of chassis. Now, uh, right next to that, of course, we've got two uh, DDR3 DIMM banks. This fully supports both 4 gig and 8 gig DIMMs, uh, meaning you can go ahead and run 16 gigabytes of memory without any issues. And we have done validation up to DDR3 3000. So ultra high speed memory performance uh, is definitely offered on here, even though this is a small form factor board. Next to that, we've got the CPU power connection and the motherboard power connection. Pretty straightforward. Directly below that, uh, we're going to go ahead and have two serial ATA ports uh, along with four serial LATE ports here in this section. So that's an upgrade from the previous generation, which only offered four. All of these are natively SATA 6G, of course, supporting RAID 0 and 1. Now, directly below that, you're going to see that we have the front connections for your chassis. Uh, those are going to be for things like your power button, your reset, your hard drive LED, power LED, and whatnot. And directly below that, we have a great ASUS uh, design innovation with our QLED technology. This is a quick LED diagnostic mechanism that allows you to go ahead and have a visual indicator so that if your system is having problems posting, you can go ahead and just look at the LED and know whether the CPU, the DRAM, the graphics card, or the boot device is having an issue. So really nice touch point for you guys when you're first setting up your systems. Now directly below that, you're going to see that we have a lever. Uh, this is a QLED lever that attaches to the physical by 16 PCI Express slot. This is a great option for you for when you go ahead and install larger size graphics cards that would normally obstruct or block the actual uh, retention clip, you now have still full access to it. So even if you install a full size length graphics card onto this, you will always have access to this lever which you can go ahead and depress and make the removal or the insertion process considerably easier as compared to a motherboard that does not feature this type of design. Now moving past that, we're going to have quite a bit over here in terms of our additional connectivity points. So we've got one, our front USB 2 connection. Directly above that we have our CMOS battery and directly above that we have our front USB 3 header. That in conjunction with the six ports on the back will actually give us a total of eight uh, USB 3 ports. Now next to that we have our front HD audio connection which ties into the ALC 1150 audio codec that we have on board which is also an upgrade from the previous generation offering a higher uh, signal to noise ratio as well as improved dB output capabilities and maintains our DTS Ultra 2 PC package. Now if we go ahead and move up right before we finish uh, taking a look at the, the topology and move over to the I.O. you can see that we also maintain our Memo OK button. This is a great option for you users that don't necessarily want to use the clear CMOS button and reset everything back to default 
defaults, uh, you can go ahead and just press it as a semi-clear CMOS and it will reset just frequency and voltage parameters, but while leaving things like your fan controls or serial ATA configuration parameters enabled. Uh, this can also, of course, attempt to resolve issues relative to memory compatibility or memory timings and tuning parameters. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the back I.O. Okay guys, so focusing in here on the back I.O. from the top we've got four USB 2 ports. Directly below that we have a DVI connection. And right next to that we've got two of our more performance oriented functions. One is going to be the clear CMOS button for you guys that are overclocking. And this is going to be a quick way to go ahead and reset the board back to factory default values. And directly below that we have our USB BIOS flashback button which allows you to go ahead and either update or recover the UEFI aka the BIOS uh, with just a flash drive inserted into one of the ports and you can go ahead and directly update or recover the UEFI, no CPU, no memory, no graphics card, just PSU standby power. Uh, directly below that, we've got a full-size HDMI port and DP port. Uh, these both support 4K resolution output, although the display port is the only one that will support 4K at 60 Hz. Uh, next up from there, we've got a Toslink optical output, which works with our DTS Ultra 2 PC codec package supporting DTS Connect, which gives us multi-channel audio re-encoding uh, to a set of digital speakers or receiver. Directly below that, we have a block of six USB 3 ports. Uh, in conjunction with our onboard USB 3 front header, that gives us a total of eight USB 3 ports on this board, so tons of high-speed connectivity. And uh, these ports will support our USB 3 boost technology to improve performance for flash storage devices like flash drives, as well as high-speed SSD-based external drives. Uh, we also have support for our USB Charger Plus, uh, which allows you to quick charge uh, devices such as an e-reader, a tablet, or a smartphone, even when your system's off. Right next to that, we have our Intel integrated gigabit Ethernet port. Uh, this also comes included with our uh, network eye control software, which is packet priority software to allow you to go ahead and optimize your network connectivity uh, for things like streaming and gaming, downloading, or whatever it might be that you want to focus in on. Now, directly below that, we have our integrated 811AC uh, PCIe module as well as Bluetooth 4.0. This is fantastic because this means that we have integrated the fastest wireless solution that's on the market in a native PCI Express uh, design which allows us to actually have faster performance than if it was plugged into one of these corresponding USB ports. Uh, so that is outstanding in terms of the performance capability as well as the Bluetooth 4.0 connectivity. Now keep in mind this also comes included with our Wi-Fi Go package, which gives you a lot of secondary level of functionality uh, that's included with NAI Suite 3. And rounding it out directly below there, we have our analog outputs, uh, which once again tie into our high definition ALC 1150 HD audio codec. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into a little bit of the performance metrics for this board. Okay guys, so now we're going to actually be going into a new part of our review, which is going to be focusing in on performance characteristics. Specifically, we're going to be talking about one, overclocking, two, we're going to be talking a little bit about I.O., which is going to be related to USB 3 as well as SATA 6G performance, and then three, we're going to be rounding things out relative to uh, functionality with if the system passed, pass marks sleeper and hibernation tests, as that's always a big point for people to wonder about. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and jump into the actual performance aspects. Okay guys, so first up you're gonna see here just a quick result that we've gone ahead and run with ADA64. So ADA64 we've gone ahead and utilized because it fully supports all the instruction sets for the Z87 chipset as well as the current generation of Haswell based CPUs. So you can see here we've gone ahead and successfully overclocked our board to 4.8 gigahertz along with a overclock of DDR3-2400 for the memory. Both of these were put under 100% full load under ADA64 and allowed to run for an entire hour without any issues or errors. So, Let's go ahead and now take a look at the performance benchmarks for USB 3. Okay guys, so for USB 3 testing, we've gone ahead and taken a SanDisk Extreme 64 gigabyte USB 3 flash drive. We went ahead and ran it in two modes of operation. First mode is going to be here in bot operation, which is the default operating protocol for Windows. It went ahead and achieved approximately about 180 megabytes uh, for its write performance, and then a little bit over 200 megabytes for its read performance. When we went ahead and used USB 3 Boost, we were able to go ahead and improve read performance all the way up to 270 plus megabytes, so quite an increase in performance, and with a slight increase in write performance at a little bit over 190 megabytes. Now, continuing on for USB 3, just being able to showcase the maximum throughput potential for USB 3 Boost, we went ahead and also tested OEM Digital's SATA 6G to USB 3 enclosure with a high performance based SSD, as you're starting to now see these type of enclosures and adapters on the market, as well as pre-built units. 
So for the performance, once again, by default in bot operating mode, we were taking a look at a little bit over 300 megabytes in terms of the write performance, and in terms of the read performance, a little over 260 megabytes. When we went ahead and shifted into our turbo mode of operation, we were able to uh, exceed over 440 megabytes in terms of the uh, write performance, and for the read performance, a little bit over 425 megabytes. So a huge increase in the overall performance that's offered uh, with our USB 3 package. Now, rounding things out, and taking a look at SATA 6G performance, overall very, very strong. We took a standard 120 gigabyte uh, SAN4 space SATA 6G SSD and went ahead and just checked the performance metrics and as we can see, everything is running nominally where it should be. Both read and write performance markers were over 500 megabytes, reaching the near peak of what the drive offers in terms of uh, 550 megabytes for the read and approximately about 520 megabytes for the write. Now, the last aspect that we're going to be taking a look at in terms of functionality relates to just a usability factor. A lot of users are interested in uh, sleep and hibernation functionality, so here we've gone ahead and run Passmark's performance test for sleep and hibernation, and you can see they completed without any issues or errors. So with that, let's go ahead and wrap things up and give you a little bit more perspective on how to consider a ZD7-i Deluxe. Okay guys, so we've gone ahead and given you a lot of information about the feature set, the functionality, the topology, even performance characteristics of the Z87-i Deluxe. So why then do I have actually Z87 Deluxe ATX series motherboard? And the reason why is because I want to give you a little bit of perspective to really show you the level of functionality and features that you have, even compared to our top end Z87 ATX mainstream series motherboard. Uh, if we just quick a quick set of perspective on the feature set and functionality, we've got integrated 811 AC along with Bluetooth 4.0. Check, it's on the Dash I. We've got, of course, a high performance uh, VRM that offers full digital power design with high amperage based chokes, 5K rated capacitors, and fully supports a high level of overclocking. Check, we have a high performance 12 plus 2 phase design on the actual Mini ITX board. Uh, when we talk about DRAM overclocking capabilities, this board has been actually rated up to DDR3 2800. We also have DDR3 2800 support. An Intel integrated gigabit Ethernet port with packet priority control and quality software service built in, we also have that on here. Even in terms of the fan control functionality, we have four fan headers that are on this board. Here we've got a little bit more in terms of the total fan header, but we still offer the same class of three pin and four pin control with the full fan expert to software suite. Uh, even in terms of serial ATA connectivity, the Deluxe features a total of 10 ports, but the Dash I is already giving you six serial ATA ports. Uh, when you consider that also even in terms of maximum connectivity for USB 3, the Deluxe features eight USB 3 ports, this board also features a total of eight USB 3 ports. So overall, when we're taking a look at comparing even uh, um, the Dash I to the highest class of what we offer in the Z87 range, you're getting a very feature rich uh, and, and jam packed board in terms of the overall functionality and the versatility, what it has to offer to you guys. So whether you're looking at building a small form factor gaming based system, a slim line performance oriented desktop, or you're looking at maybe something on the server or media center oriented side of the fence, the Dash I is gonna be very aplomb at offering you a great experience for any one of those. So as the last part of our video here, we're actually going to be rounding it out with giving you a little bit of recommendation on some of the key components you would be using if you want to build an actual high performance, small form factor based system using the Z87-i Deluxe. Okay guys, so here we're going to just quickly go over the components for our small form factor build featuring the Z87-i Deluxe. For the CPU, you've got your option of either a 4670K or 4770K, as seeing as that this is an overclocking enabled motherboard. Uh, for the CPU cooler, we've gone ahead and gone with a low profile but still high performance solution with the Noctua low profile L9i. Uh, for the memory, we've gone ahead and tapped Kingston's HyperX uh, Beast oriented memory at 2133. Uh, for the GPU, we've gone with a high performance but small form factor design with the ASUS GeForce GTX 670 DC Mini. For the PSU, we'll be powering everything with is a Silverstone SFX PSU 450 watt. Uh, they offer it in both a gold as well as bronze series model. And uh, for the case, we're going to be going with Lian Li's PCQ30. And lastly, in terms of storage duties, we're going to be using Kingston's HyperX uh, 240 gigabyte SSD. Okay guys, so that wraps up our overview video on the Z87-i Deluxe. We've covered a lot of information ranging uh, from performance to feature set uh, to even build considerations. So as always, if you guys have any questions, comments, or feedback, make sure to leave them here on the YouTube page or feel free to go ahead and email us over at the YouTube inbox as well. You can also make sure to hit us up at our ASUS North America Facebook page as well as our ASUS North America Twitter pages. So as always, thank you for watching and make sure to like and subscribe.